All right then, gang. In this series, we're going to be diving into the Google Gemini CLI, which is a tool not too dissimilar to Claude Code, in that it brings the power of an AI coding agent to the terminal, which you can then spin up within a project to help generate code, fix bugs, ask questions about the code base, and dare I say it, vibe code. And I really like CLI coding agents because they can slot into any workflow without caring about what editor I'm using. And I'm not bombarded with UI distractions and I can just easily toggle between the interactive agent session and manually running shell commands. I've been a huge fan of Claude Code ever since I started using it and it's generally been my tool of choice when it comes to AI assisted coding. But just recently, I've also started using the Gemini CLI and I've been really impressed with not only how it performs, but also the interface and tooling around it. And unlike Claude Code, it offers a free plan with some generous limits and a huge context window of 1 million tokens. All you need is a Google account. Now, if you know nothing about context windows or tokens, don't worry, I'm gonna explain what they are later in the course, but essentially it means that the AI model can hold a lot more of your project and conversation history in its head at one time. The Gemini CLI also makes it really easy to add extensions, which can be MCP servers, prompt libraries, custom commands, or a mixture of all those things bundled into a single install. And all of this, along with the recently released Gemini 3 model, which I found to be really capable when it comes to coding, makes the Gemini CLI a really appealing product right now. In this series then, we're gonna start by installing and setting up the Gemini CLI on our computer. So we can start using it within a project to make code changes, fix bugs, and work on new features. After that, we'll create a Gemini Markdown file to provide additional instructions to the agent about how it should work, including any coding preferences that we might have for the project, like how to style components or write tests, or where to put new files when it makes them. We're gonna talk about adding context to sessions and how to manage that context when your session gets too bloated. And also we'll be exploring some of the built-in commands that the Gemini CLI gives to us to do things like add memories and update settings before making some of our own custom commands as well. I'm going to show you how to add MCP servers, which allows the agent to communicate with external services and APIs like maybe Firebase or NanoBanana. And by the end of this course, you should be pretty confident using the CLI in your own development workflow. The first thing we need to do then is install it onto our computer, which we can do by running a single command. On a Mac, you can use Homebrew to install it globally using this command right here. If you're on Windows, you can use NPM to install it globally instead by running this command. And to do that, you will need Node.js installed on your computer first, which you can get from nodejs.org. So copy whichever command you need. And then inside a terminal, you can paste that command in and hit enter to run it. And that's going to install the Gemini CLI on your computer. Now I've already installed it, so I don't need to run this command again. And for that reason, I'm just going to delete all of this. But anyway, next up, we need to navigate to a project folder we want to use the Gemini CLI in, which we can do by using the CD command. So I'm just going to CD into a project folder called Food Smash, which is a dummy Nuxt project I've been working on today. And by the way, I've uploaded this same dummy starter project to GitHub, so you can use the same one if you want, and I'll show you how to get that starter project shortly. Anyway, now I'm inside that project, I wanna run the Gemini CLI, which we can do by just typing Gemini and then hitting enter. When you do that, after a moment, the big Gemini logo is gonna pop up and greet you with a little welcome message and some tips. Now, if this is the very first time you're booting the Gemini CLI up, it's also probably gonna ask you to authenticate and give you three options to do that. In fact, I'm gonna run the auth command by typing forward slash auth and hitting enter because this is probably what you'll be seeing in your terminal. So we have three options, which we can cycle through using the up and down arrow keys. The first one is to log in with your Google account. And if you hit enter on this option, it's gonna open a browser and ask you to authenticate in your browser with your standard Google account. The second option is to use a Gemini API key, which you can get from the Google AI Studio. And I will show you how to do that later. And the last option is to use a Vertex AI account. And Vertex is like a hub for creating and fine tuning and deploying models and applications. To begin with, I would recommend just logging in with your Google account, which is free and it gives you a ton of usage with Gemini 2.5. At the time of recording, to use the Gemini 3 model, you will need to add an API key or have a Google Ultra account, which is about 120 quid a month in the UK. It's much cheaper to use an API key and I will show you how to get one of those later in the course. 
course. For now though, I would definitely recommend just choosing this first option. Anyway, once you're logged in, you can start using Gemini right off the bat to do things. For example, I could ask it to tell me about this current project by typing something like, tell me about this project, and then just hit enter. Now, when I do that, Gemini is going to look around the project, read a bunch of files and get a good feel for what it is. And then hopefully it's going to give me a little summary. All right, and now we can see that summary right here that says it is a Nux3 demo project called Food Smash using Vue and Vite Test. The UI features a main page with a hero section, search, content discovery, a separate page for creating, uh, creating food combinations and so forth. Uses this package for icons. Um, it tells us what pages we've got down here. So yeah, all together, a pretty good summary. All right, so in a moment, I'm gonna open the project up in VS Code so we can browse the code ourselves if we want to. And I prefer running the Gemini CLI directly inside VS Code's integrated terminal in one of my projects, which we'll do in a minute. But before we do that, I wanted to show you where you can grab this data project from on GitHub. So it's this repo right here called Gemini CLI course, which I will leave a link to down below the video. And all you need to do is make sure the starter project branch is selected from the branch drop down right here, then hit the code button and choose to download a zip of the project. Once you've done that, you can extract the contents and open the project folder in VS Code or whatever editor you might be using. Okay then, so I've got the project open right here and if you've ever used Nuxt before, you can probably tell it's a pretty simple Nuxt setup we've got. We've got an app folder which contains all the assets like CSS, a layouts folder for layouts and a pages folder for any page components. Inside that pages folder, we've only got two pages, the index which is the home page, and create which is a web form. Now down here, we've got a public folder for any public assets. We've got a test folder for any test files as well. We've also got a package.json file, which lists all the project dependencies. And if you downloaded this data project to work on, you'll actually need to run the npm install command in a terminal to install these. So you can do that by clicking on this icon to open the bottom panel, the terminal, and come to that terminal and then type npm install and just hit enter. I've already done that. So I'm just gonna delete this. All right, so now I'm just gonna make some changes to the display inside VS Code because when I'm working with AI to work on a project, I like to have that AI session on the right panel over here and not down at the bottom. So I'm gonna open my right panel by clicking on this icon. Then I'll move the terminal from the bottom panel to this one instead. And now inside this terminal window, I'm gonna run the Gemini command in the root of this project and hit enter to start up a new Gemini session. Now, Gemini has a companion extension for VS Code, which if this is the first time you've run Gemini within VS Code, it's probably gonna ask you to install. And you can go ahead and do that because it's gonna add some additional features to the Gemini CLI, like open file context, selection context and native diffing. Now, don't worry if you don't know what any of that means yet, we're gonna cover it later, but for now it's definitely worth installing that companion extension if it asks. Anyway, once you've done that, you should be dropped into the interactive Gemini session like this, where we can start using it to ask questions about the project and make code changes and so forth. Now, we're gonna start all that in the next lesson. And to begin with, I just wanna get this project up and running in a browser so that we can preview it as we work. So to do that, I'm gonna open a brand new terminal window. And then inside that, I will type the command npm run dev and hit enter. And that's gonna spin up a local development server for this Nuxt application. So we can preview it on localhost port 3000. Okay, so this is what it currently looks like. A very simple website called Food Smash. And we have a hero section right here with a search bar. We have some cards down here. Up here, we've got a button to the create page where we can enter in a couple of foods, description, add tags, etc. So yeah, this is what we're gonna be working on in this series, and we'll be using the Gemini CLI to make changes to the application. Now, just before we finish this lesson, I wanna mention one thing. This is not gonna be a full-on vibe coding tutorial. I am not a big fan of vibe coding and I think it produces a lot of slop and buggy code. Instead, I prefer to use agentic coding tools in a more nuanced and targeted way, working on smaller features one at a time, then reviewing the generated code and dipping into the weeds myself to make changes. That way I'm heavily involved in the whole development loop 
I know what each part of my code base does. And if I do ever need to debug something or make manual changes, I'm not fumbling around or copying and pasting errors into the AI only for it to just mess things up even more. So again, I'll be using Gemini CLI in a more focused and structured way to implement individual features, components, and so on. And in that regard, I'd say this series is more intended for new or existing coders who want to improve their development workflow using AI and not so much for vibe coders. Anyway, now we've got everything set up in the next lesson, we'll start asking Gemini to help us with this project. By the way, if you want early access to this entire course, you can get it now. It's all up on the netninja.dev website. It's just $3 to buy, or you can sign up for a NetNinja Pro subscription, which is just $9 a month. And for that, you get access to my entire course library, plus all of my masterclass courses as well, not found anywhere else. Again, that's just $9 a month. And the first month is half price using this promo code right here. So I'll leave this link down below the video.